Hey, hey, welcome in my math party people. Anderson here, your ASVAB coach. And in this question, we're gonna be taking a look at how to set up a proportion question exactly how you're supposed to, how to know that you're doing it the right way. Because let's be real, you know, we've gotten some questions right, we've gotten some questions wrong, but what not everybody knows to do is how to explain how you know you're right. So let me help you out with that in this short video. That way you can get this done. So starting off, we see here that the question is the first thing we should always look at. What is the question telling us to do? So right here it says in red, how many total crayons are there? And it gives you some extra information. It says if 88 green crayons are in the bag. So it might be pretty easy to tell that this is a proportion question for the simple reason being that we are making comparisons. Notice how it says, hey, how many total if we have this many green? And if you briefly look at the first sentence, you might see this says 18 yellow crayons for every 66 green. So we are comparing two things here. We're comparing crayons to crayons in both sentences. So here's my tip number one. The biggest tip that I can give you is when it comes to proportion questions, you're always going to set up your proportion based off of the question. Not, all, not the information, not the first sentence, the question sentence. Because basically, you're going to want to set it up the right way by comparing the same things in the same way. And the question sentence, it's going to be a lot easier to do it from that perspective than going off of the first sentence. Let me show you why. So it says how many total crayons if we have 88 green. So right there from the very get go, I'm going to say, OK, we're looking for total crayons and we have 88 green. OK, if you recall, remember that when it comes to proportions, again, you have this fraction equals this fraction. And what I see here is that I'm looking for the total. So I'll write total. And then we have 88 green on the bottom. So remember, you want to compare the same things in the same way. This is how you can tell that this is sort of a tricky question. So we have the total up top right here. And then we have green underneath. Now, this is why this question is tricky, but I'm going to show you exactly how to get this done. So watch in the first sentence. What do we see? We see that we have in this bag, there are 18 yellow crayons for every 66 green. What does that mean? Well, I have the 66 green and I have the 18 and some people might be tempted to write it like this. Okay, we have green, 66 green, so I'll put 66 on bottom, I'll put the 18 up top and then I'll solve. Incorrect. Incorrect for the simple reason being this. That does not represent a proportion that will give you the total. How do I know? Again, the 66 green, that's right there. That's good, that's fine. But the 18, that does not represent total. We have to compare the same things in the same way. Yeah, that's green, but the 18 represents yellow. And that is not correct. We want total over green, total over green. Again, compare the same things in the same way. Write that down if you didn't know that already. And also, if you wouldn't take a moment, if you see that this is making sense, please go ahead and leave a comment letting me know how much this helped you. Just go ahead, take a quick moment to do that. So with that said, how do we know what to put? Well, since we have 18 yellow and 66 green, just think about this naturally. How do you get a total? You get a total by adding them all up. So to find the total representation for that sentence, that's going to be 18 plus 66, which is going to give us 76 plus 8, which is 84. So 84 total there. So boom, I'll put 84. And now we have the correct representation for total over green. And that's it. Again, by basing it off of the question, you'll be able to see that you don't have all the pieces you need, allowing you to find out what those missing pieces are to then solve the problem for what you're looking for. I know it seems a little complicated, but with practice, you'll definitely get it down. You will. So with that said, there we are. Boom, 84 total. And now all that's left to do is to solve this proportion. Now, the biggest piece of advice I can give you when it comes to solving proportions is simply going to be this. Look for any and every way that you can to simplify the fractions or simplify the proportion before you continue. That means you can simplify the fraction like that, or you can simplify horizontally. Here's what I mean by that. This is actually the fastest way to do it. Here I notice that 88 and 66, both of these are divisible by 22. That's a big number that I can, ki that can kiss right out of there. And I'll do that. So with that said, booyah, I'm gonna divide both denominators by 22. 
Why am I doing that? Because nobody in their right mind wants to multiply 88 times 84. Cross, multiply, and divide. That's death. I don't want that. So let's go ahead and simplify first. And so with that said, Booyah will end up having the total over 22 into 88 is 4. 84 and then 66 divided by 22 is 3. That's pretty good. That's pretty good so far. And another thing that I might be willing to look at is, well, how many times does 3 go into 84? Hmm. Can I simplify that too? Yes, you can. You can go ahead and see that, hey, look, because 8 plus 4 is 12, that means 3 can go into 84. And if you didn't know that rule of divisibility, let me prove it to you right over here. 3 into 84, 3 into 8, that's going to be 2. Then 3 into 24, that's going to be 8. So that would be 28 if I divided the 3 out. So that gives me t over 4 equals, and that's going to be 28 over 1. Look at how much easier that makes my life. Again, that's with mental math first. And now you see that if you cross multiply, you get your answer instantly. t equals 4 times 28. And with a little bit of mental math, 4 times 20 is 80. 4 times 8 is 32. So 80 plus 32 is going to give us 112. And then boom, there it is. The total is 112. Again, my party people, look, this is not anything that is brand new or crazy. This is just using the information that you already know and making use of it to make a problem that could take you three minutes. Let's lower that to take a minute and a half, two minutes. That's what mental math and that's what strategizing is all about. So hopefully you having a good time here. Again, don't forget to comment on what your favorite part of this video was. And if you haven't done so already, remember that my full program is free for a week. Go ahead, click that link right over there or type it into your chat box or the link is in the description of this video or go ahead and scan that QR code. Either way, I'm excited to help you succeed and pass the ASVAB starting with a free full week, no credit card required. I got your back.